Hi, my name is Blaine Roski. I'm Director of Product Management at Brocade's Data Center Storage and Solutions Group. I'm here today with Dennis Makashima, our Senior Director of Engineering. Uh, welcome, Dennis. Thanks, Blaine. Good to be here. Great. So we're developing a series of educational videos that kind of highlight and talk about a lot of the unique features and capabilities offered on Brocade's SAN platforms and products. Uh, in this session, we're going to be talking specifically about our ClearLink diagnostic port capabilities, or what we call D-port capabilities, part of our Brocade's Fabric Vision technology. So we're going to take a look at what these diagnostic port tests are, how you use them, the value that they bring to customer environments, and we're even going to go through a demonstration showing you how you would run the diagnostic port tests, either with the command line interface or through network advisor management software. So Dennis, let's talk a little bit about some, uh, some examples of why this type of diagnostics capability is so important, why it's critical to have this robust, reliable infrastructure and using diagnostic type uh, test tools are so important to the customers. So what, what have you seen in, in your experience working with customers in this regard? Right, so I've had a lot of experience working with customers on all sorts of issues and, and this is one of the most common issues that we see uh, where there's uh, cable and uh, optics and infrastructure issues that, that lead to problems in their environment. So what, what, what types of problems, if you have a, a, an SFP issue, an optic issue, a cable issue, what types of problems do you see customers running into that, uh, that result from those types of uh, problems? One of the problems is that the customers may not know what they're dealing with initially. They, they will see random application faults, they might see application slowdown, and they're trying to figure out what, what's happening. And some of the customers don't really have the knowledge of how to go in there and find what the issue is. And once they do find what the issue is and, and narrow it down to uh, a cable or SFP, that process is very manual. One customer example that I could think of was a large enterprise, mission critical end user customer. And they would do a trial and error method initially, meaning they would hook up their cables, their SFPs, either in pre-deployment or in, in production when they have to replace a cable or an SFP. So they ran they into would, a problem, they need to replace right, something, right. they do this testing. They would yeah. just, they, the trial and error meant they would just run the traffic. Right, and, right. and sometimes the cable and the SFP they installed wouldn't work out so well, and mm -hmm. then that would cost them additional outage, additional downtime. And, and that was problematic. And they, had this, to, they had to actually take their applications down, do this troubleshooting, diagnostic replacement, then they come back up. Well, obviously very expensive in a lot of uh, customer environments to take that kind of a downtime impact. Right, it was unpredictable. Right. And, and what they did to, to get around that was they, they would test out the links ahead of deploying the links into, with production traffic. Uh -huh. And they, what they would have to do to make sure that this test doesn't interfere is they would actually have to schedule some downtime. Okay. So they would schedule some downtime, they would manually run a test on this new link, and sometimes they have to use third-party equipment like a traffic generator, run traffic through this link, and then bring the links on, online once they were sure that, that uh, the infrastructure was solid. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. took time. Um, it was very manual. They relied on third-party test equipment. Which is expensive. Expensive equipment to bring in, to test out, to generate the traffic. It requires training yep. and, and then it requires downtime. So I guess the idea here is it would be great to, to be able to facilitate that type of diagnostics but do it in an easier, simpler, faster, cheaper way, right? Which, right. which brings us to diagnostic port tests. I'm guessing uh, some of this customer interaction you've had over the years may have uh, kind of led to this, uh, this new capability and enhancement right. in FOSS and our, our Gen 5 fiber channel platforms. A collection of experiences like this and, and uh, experience with real world customers that led us mm -hmm. to develop this technology. So Dennis, um, let's go ahead and walk our viewers through the diagnostic port test. Show them a little bit exactly about what types of tests are run, what, uh, what uh, components are being tested and verified uh, through the various stages of the D-port testing. So, uh, so if we take a look here, we've got, uh, we've got a diagram. On the left side of the diagram, you can see the Condor 3, the C3 ASIC, 16 gig SFP, those two gray boxes. That's kind of representing uh, one side, one of the switches, the switch port. And on the right side of this diagram, you see what's labeled as the test responder. Again, in this case, it's another switch port. You see the C3 ASIC box, the 16 gig SFP. So these are the two ports and SFPs on the two different switches connected together with the ISLs. So why don't you take us now through the different tests that are performed when the D-port diagnostics are actually executed. So 
The deep pour tests con consist of four steps. The first step is the electrical loopback test. And it, you can see on the, the picture that we have here, on the left you see uh, a red looping line, and then you see another red uh, looping line on the right. And uh, this, this represents the electrical path through, uh, through your, your cable and, and SFP. So basically it goes through the, uh, the series of the ASIC and out electrically into the SFP and then loops back uh, electrically in the SFP back into the ASIC and the same thing happens on the other side. Okay, so when you're running this on a link, you've got your initiator side port, you've got your responder side port, so the two ends of the link, and this electrical loopback test is actually running on both ends of, of that link, right? That's correct. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So after electrical loopback test, what other tests are run? The next test is the optical loopback test, or what we call the O-wrap test. So the O-wrap test, you can see in the picture, is the green line that starts on the, the right and loops through the, the series of the ASIC, through the SFP, out externally, uh, through the next, the neighboring SFP, and, and back to the originating port. The, the two tests, the electrical loopback test and the optical loopback test, are, are pretty useful uh, in, in being able to isolate where the problems are. Mm -hmm. So in the old days, you maybe run a traffic test and then you have a failure, right. and then where's the failure? Is it on the, on, on the left side SFP? Is it on the right side SFP? Is it the cable? And um, trying, to, trying to find out which component it is is a lot of trial and error. So you know something failed, but you don't know where along the link it failed. Was it the local SFP, the remote SFP, the fiber, et cetera? It was really hard to isolate exactly where that was. Right, and then it was very labor intensive to figure out what the source of the failure was, and some customers in order to save time, would basically just throw it all away right, and then right. run run uh, run the test again on a, on a brand new set of infrastructure. So, so they're going to rip way, out both SFPs right. and the fiber and just replace it all across the board. A lot easier and faster than actually trying to isolate the individual component. Either way, it's additional cost for the customer, either right. time or uh, cost of the components. Okay. So there are additional tests then. So the electrical loopback, optical loopback. What else is run? Right, there's also a link traffic test, and that'll, that'll basically uh, do a couple things. It, it will help to ensure that the, the whole cable, SAP, the, the, the infrastructure is solid. Another thing it can do is help the customer, uh, give the customer assurance that this infrastructure is capable of running the speed that they wanted to run it. Okay, okay. The last test is the link latency and distance measurement test. So these tests are uh, very useful for long distance links and um, you know customers a lot of time will really want to know what the what the actual measured distance is of their link uh, and they also want to know what the what the latency is of their links and that helps them plan uh, the performance of their infrastructure great Dennis so I, I think I, I've got a pretty good understanding now of the different tests that are executed uh, if you're running diagnostic port tests uh, any chance you've got some examples of a, of a customer that's actually already used diagnostic port, used deport, tested things out? Uh, any, any feedback from customers yet? Yes, one example that I have is we worked with a very large end user customer and they were building a very large fabric, multi-thousands of ports. And this was a large mission critical fabric that they were building and they were one of the pioneers using deport. And they ran deport on all their links and they found dozens upon dozens of failures and they had to go back to their uh, optics vendor and have them rework a bunch of the cables and SFPs and, and, uh, and found, um, found that the test that the vendor was using wasn't as uh, robust as, as Dport. And this customer came back to us and said not only was Dport very easy to use, it saved them time, but it caught issues that they previously would never have caught before they went into production. And he went on and on about how much time and money he saved by catching these issues ahead of time. Okay, so this was a brand new environment that they were rolling out, brand new cabling, optics, and everything that had just been installed. And Deport was able to find failures and uh, kind, of, kind of some intermittent issues, that type of thing that, uh, that the cabling vendor had, had missed, had, had thought were working correctly. Correct. Okay, great, great. So, so we've actually seen some examples of where this diagnostic port test has, has already proven itself out in, in real world customer environments. Right. Okay. okay. 
So Dennis, I, I noticed here in this diagram that we show both on the test initiator and the test responder devices here, um, it looks like these are both switch ports. You've got a C3 or our Condor 3 Gen 5 ASIC on the left side and a Condor 3 ASIC on the right side. Now, if this were a brocade switch to say an adapter, that might be something else, right? Because we do support this uh, between our switches and adapters, correct? That's correct. Yeah, we support the, the deep port test between the pairs, pairs, pairs of switches, but the, the device port could also be an HBA port. And an example of this is we support it today with our brocade so HBA. Brocade adapters, terrific, terrific. And uh, also there are some requirements. This is supported on Gen 5 platforms, so the Condor 3 switches, for example, the Gen 5 switches. Um, and I also noticed it, it calls out specifically 16 gig SFP pluses. This capability is not supported, I presume, on older SFPs. Correct. The, the capability of doing the, the loopback test is supported on the, only on the 16 gig SFPs. Okay, so that's new capability that's been integrated into the actual 16 gig SFPs themselves. It, it's actually part of the optics capabilities. That's correct. Okay, great. So if we take a look uh, again, the initial debut of Diagnostic Port or the D-Port test uh, were launched initially in FOSS 7.0 and this of course is where we debuted our Gen 5 platforms beginning with our DCX 8510 and our fixed port Brocade 6510, that's a 48 port Gen 5 16 gig cable capable fiber channel switch. So that was the initial support and the initial diagnostic port support was only on ISL. So you can only do it e-port to e-port over ISL connections. Later in FOSS 7.0.1, we added additional support for doing D-port between a Brocade Gen 5 switch and Brocade 16 gig fiber channel adapter. So we added to not just switch to switch, but now switch to Brocade adapter. And we also added D-port support on our access gateway. So when a switch is operating in access gateway mode, you could run D-ports between that access gateway mode switch and another fiber channel, Gen 5 fiber channel switch. Next up, FOSS 7.1, we added additional enhancements. Uh, in particular, we added D-port support for ultra-scale ICLs. Now this is limited support because the QSFPs uh, that support the ICLs, the inner chassis links, don't support the optical and electrical loopback testing. Is that correct, Dennis? There's uh, not, the capability is not there in the QSFPs? Right, that's correct. Okay, so we can run the saturation tests, some of the distance tests, et cetera, uh, but we can't do the full suite of full D-port diagnostic port testing on the ICLs. Right, the test will still be pretty powerful. It'll allow you to validate the health of the link but uh, the, the capability to isolate where the problem is, is is not there without the SFP capabilities. Okay, got it. So we extended that out a bit further. Okay, and then uh, next up was our FOSS 7.2 release. Uh, and in this release, we added support between Brocade 16 gig HBAs and uh, 16 gigabit access gateway mode switch. So our Gen 5 switches in access gateway mode attached to uh, a Brocade HBA. We also added support for complete diagnostic port test results on the initiator side and the responder side. So my understanding is up until FOSS 7.2, you could see the complete tests only on the side that actually initiates the diagnostic port tests. If you're on the responder side, you saw some of the results, but not the complete results. So now with 7.2, you can see full results on, on both ends, either the receiver or the, uh, the initiator side of the port and switch. And then uh, the final enhancement in FOSS 7.2 uh, includes support for dynamic D-port between Gen 5 switches and our Brocade Gen 5 adapters. And what this dynamic D-port uh, support means is if you initiate the diagnostic port test from the Gen 5 adapter side, the switch spot side will automatically respond as long as it supports diagnostic port testing, which again, all of our Gen 5 switches support as long as they have the 16 gig uh, uh, SFPs in them. They can actually kick off the test from the adapter side and the switch will respond and automatically go into D port mode. So. Right, and that'll help use cases where maybe the adapter's getting replaced or maybe mm -hmm. the, the, the server's coming online for the first time. So some uh, examples are, are more switch centric and this example is more uh, more host or HBA centric. Okay, so without that capability though, uh, if you're going in, you're replacing HBA, you could run testing from the adapter side, but the switch, you'd have to actually go into the user interface for the switch, put it into D-port mode. So now with this enhancement, you don't have to do that. So it's a simplicity and ease of use, makes it a lot simpler for an administrator who's working on the server side to kick this testing off then. That's right. Okay, got it. 
All right, great, Dennis. So I think that about wraps up uh, all the topics we wanted to cover. Really, uh, really appreciate you, you joining us here today and taking us through the D-Port Diagnostic Port Testing. If you're interested in more information about ClearLink Diagnostics, we've got a number of different resources available to you. Uh, if you go to Brocade's website, we have a number of different documents and other material that you can refer to and uh, get a little bit more information. So thank you again.